Alright you guys, in this video I'm going to be taking this old Chinese four-wheeler. It's been broken down for years. I'm going to repower it with the 7 horsepower side shaft motor. And I'm also going to be putting a dump bed on the back so I can move soil, rock, and tools, things like that around my property easy. So uh, if it's something you're interested in, stick around and check out the video. Thanks for watching. So I'm pretty much just starting by taking anything I don't need off the quad. Motor, wiring, any other brackets, stuff like that. So we'll go from there. The motor might appear to be complete garbage, and it mostly is, but the CBD transmission, clutch, final drive, and forward reverse gearbox we're going to keep for the project. Alright, so this evening what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the rear shock and weld it out to the frame because uh, the rear shock's been broken and pogoing for a long time. It really didn't work very good for towing things too because it would lift and lower and do weird things. Front suspension staying good because it works well. Uh, I figure it can't be any worse than a garden tractor. They have pretty much the rear wheels are all tied to the frame and everything for the transmission. They don't articulate at all. They don't go up and down. And they only have a tilting axle up front. So this with the independent front suspension should be fine. Another thing I'm kicking around the idea of doing is actually lengthening the frame somewhere. It would be really nice. I want to cut this back section off and drop down to a bed on it. So if I could actually lengthen the frame, it means I could get a little bit bigger bed on the back of it. So we'll see what we can do with that. Just got the motor pulled out. Uh, it's 150 cc liquid cooled, four stroke. Um, seemed like a nice little setup, but just a cheap Chinese quad. And there's a lot of problems it had. It had electrical issues. Uh, one other thing, like the rubber is built so bad on it, all the air intake and everything rotted out from the carburetor to the, from the air box and everything. Even the intake manifolds are splitting and cracking. All the plastic sun faded and cracked really quick. Um, but hey, I got it for free that way, so can't really complain. But um, one nice feature it had is actually has a forward and reverse gearbox here, which I want to keep that and... Um, I'm also going to try to keep the clutch and variator set up here and I think I'm going to cut it off right here and get rid of the motor. This front part of the pulley for the variator, I think I may try to try to adapt that to the new motor, but it might be a bit difficult. So if I can't, I'm going to just go buy another one online to see if I can find something for cheap. Um, and the quad had terrible gearing, it would actually go maybe 45 top speed. But uh, down slow for towing stuff or trying to go over like maybe six inch logs just to have no power if you just roll up against them. It was geared way too tall. So I'll show you what I'm going to do with the sprocket to change the gearing a little bit. So we'll go around to the side and I'll show you. Yeah. Pulled the sprocket off a little bit ago and it has this weird spacer and a seal lip for the seal right here for the gearbox. And it's a really wide sprocket. So here's the sprocket from an XR650L. And here's this one. It's about one and a half times wider. So I'm going to go for just a 520 chain pitch, whatever this was. I'm not sure. I don't really care. But um, what I need to do is uh, cut this spacer ring and this little dust shield lip off of it. And I'm going to weld the XR650 sprocket on there instead. Go from a 17 down to a 14 should really help the gear ratio low end torque because that's what I really want on it. I'm not expecting to go 45 anymore. If it, if it topped out at 25, I'd be fine. Mainly. Well, I finally got a lathe. I've been wanting one of these for quite a few years now. And I was going to go for a much smaller lathe in the past. Uh, but my buddy Dave kept recommending me to just go bigger is better, he said. So I ended up getting this one. It was a little bigger than I was planning on getting, but it's been a really nice machine. I'm happy I did get it. Still learning how to use it. All right. Well, I got the 17 tooth stock sprocket chucked in my lathe. And uh, what I'm going to do is try to cut off the sprocket and leave a little bit of a lip so I can slide this one on and weld it. And I'll still have all the internal splines still on here. So I got that sprocket removed and I got this collar with the internal splines that I wanted um, all cut down. So this is the new sprocket I'm going to get put on there. fits on now. And I'm just going to weld it from this side here and it should work pretty well. Yes. Going to take this old angle grinder I have here and... Uh, Go right through the frame, separate it, keep the transmission where we like those parts, they work well. The motor sucks, so we're getting rid of that. And uh, I just want to get it cut tonight and put in the frame so I can start figuring out where I'm going to put the lawnmower engine and all that stuff and couple it to this transmission. 
and start figuring out where I want to cut the frame and lengthen it. Alright, it's free. So after looking this thing over a little bit, I've realized that the best spot to lengthen the frame, I think, is on the swing arm. And uh, mainly because I want to keep the foot pegs, brake, motor, steering, everything up forward the same. Um, but I want to really do is right after the seat, do a bed back here. And I want to haul a bit of cargo and like firewood and different things like that and tools. So the best spot for me to extend it would be just the swing arm area and uh, to for, of course get a bigger chain, longer chain for it. But everything else would work, even the brake line, I have enough room to extend it at least another 10 inches, so. All right, starting to cut away the swing arm here. Decided to take off the mounts up here, just look like a pain in the ass, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Just start taking the angle grinder, I'm cutting it through here, as you can see, I can pivot the swing arm down and just about all the way through, just gotta take off a few little bits right there and there. And because this is a flat plate here and this is a flat plate, I'm gonna actually um, put some bars right between here to extend it. So I think that should work out pretty well. Well, here it is. I extend the swing arm about, I think, 10 inches or so. And uh, I got some more gusseting to do, but this is good for the night. And uh, tomorrow I'll probably add some parts to kind of connect to take up where the shock was and just kind of gusset this and make it all solid back here. So that's good for the night. So I was digging through my scrap pile and I found some small square stock and these teal pieces of metal here came from like uh, legs of a table and they're already welded together like this but I kind of like the way it's laid out there. So I think I'm going to do something like this. I want to get it lower, just a little lower so it just comes over the tires a few inches and that's uh, going to be my frame, main frame rails for the dump bed and I still need to tie in some metal that comes off the frame here down to the swing arm to lock it out because of course the shock's gone so uh, we'll get cutting and modifying here. Well here's how far I got this evening. I got this main support frame that's going to hold the rear dump. Got that all um, welded on here really nice and solid. Got this crossbar in here. These come down to the rear end and uh, took the old shock mount up here. I welded a straight bar all the way down to the swing arm and have a little bar right here that comes across the foot pegs now behind the foot pegs. So, oh and another thing I took and welded off uh, the swing arm where the pivot point was so it should be pretty good. Alright, so the motor I ordered for the project just showed up today. It's a Duramax 7 horsepower. I got the electric start with the lighting coil because I just wanted to be able to charge a battery on here. And um, So yeah, I got this model here. I've never ran one of these. I think they're pretty much the same as uh, all the Honda clones out there. I have a Harbor Freight motor, a 6.5 horsepower I've been running on my log splitter. I've been pretty happy with for a $100 motor. They're not bad. This one was 180 um, because it had the lighting coil and the electric start and the key. But I felt like it was worth it to just get one with that so I can charge a battery on here. Use the, would like to use the battery on this thing for like a jumper box. Like if I have a vehicle with a dead battery, I can just drive it down to it and hook, a, I'm gonna run a car battery somewhere on here and I can just hook jumper leads into it and start a car. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get rid of the fuel tank and the muffler, I'm gonna be relocating the muffler to the very back, so a long tube. And I want to lower the motor down so I can fit it in the frame more. Next, we're gonna strip this motor back and try to fit it in the frame. Alright, I got the motor set in there, and uh, it's at a slight angle, I need to make a little more room, but what I really need to do is cut the aluminum framework off the transmission a little further back. When I originally cut it down, I just want to separate from the motor, but I need to cut it back to about here, so I can bring the motor over a little bit more. 
And after I get that figured out, I need to work on how to extend the shaft a little bit to fit the stock scooter variator back onto here for the front pulley. So I'll cut the transmission back and try to get all this fitting together nicely. And I've been trying to figure out how to make this variator work on here. Uh, I bored this out from 17 millimeter to three quarters of an inch. Had to bore out this back steel plate as well. So all this fits on there now. I still need to cut a keyway into it. This front aluminum front pulley cover was 17 millimeters with splines. I bored out to three quarters of an inch, but as you can see, the shafts on the motor stops in here, maybe three eighths of an inch. So I made this little part on my lathe that will drop into here and fit up into here. I can tighten it down with a bolt. And once I bore a keyway in here, everything should be locked on pretty well. So. Now I can start working with the belt alignment to get the motor and the transmission aligned and work on the motor mounts. That next. Not sure if you guys can see it, but I cut a small keyway in this thing for the torque converter, so that should take care of it. All right, I got a motor mount welded up for the transmission that comes off the frame and mounts to the top of the transmission, so it's mounted in two different locations. And I got a plate cut from the motor. It's all bolted in. Motor mounts are all welded as well. And uh, did some tubing here, some well, one and a half inch tubing to bring it up off the frame a little bit. And put a plate here that you can slide the motor back and forth to tension the belt. Everything's fairly tight in here, but it still fit really well. Here's the kind of clearances between the transmission and motor. Still got to put the muffler on, hook up the quad tank, put some oil in it, and then I can fire it up. But a pretty happy way it all coming together now. So what I'm going to be working on now is uh, got to take this, I got the muffler off here. I'm going to come out here and curve out and come down past here and if I use the stock exhaust I'm going to have it pop out somewhere down on the side. I also have a small motorcycle exhaust system right here which has this curve which I probably could use, cut it off here and either make a flange for this or use the one on the stock exhaust. All right, so I got the original flange cut off the stock muffler and you can see it's quite restrictive here. So I'm gonna grind it out to the original hole size, which should match this other exhaust system here. And I'm gonna cut this off about 90 so it comes up and curves off towards the back of the four-wheeler. So we'll get on with that next. Well, that little XR80 muffler ended up being the choice here. It worked really well. I still have to weld a little hanger on to hold it up under the bed here, but it sits nice and low and sits to the side in case I do like a lift cylinder of some sort in here. Got clearance on the frame. Clears that bar. Clears all these. And use the stock flange off the stock muffler and it goes right on. Just had to cut part of the corner off on the XR, kind of fit it in there, but pretty happy. Even the heat shield ended up lining up, so doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> What's it say? Well, it says, I love it when a plan comes together. So this is the Ford and reverse uh, gear shifter. And the rod used to come straight down to the transmission, but I had to do a little cut and bend up and then over to get it to work. So that would be reverse, that's forward reverse, forward, so it should be pretty good. Well, it's running now. Still waiting on the final drive chain. It's going to be coming in the next few days, I think. Anyways, got the gas tank mounted last night. Decided to go for the original motor tank. I just kind of like the look of it a little more. The big plastic tank up above had a little more of a quad look, and I'd like to get away from that and maybe a little bit more like a utility vehicle. So I got the angle iron set up here for the dump bed, and I got the pins, the hinge pins in place. All right, so I got the back two bars installed here. I need to install the front bar right here. Before I do that, I need to cut off the frame. 
right up through here and the other side right over there. And then I can put this final crossbar on here. Well, I got all three bars welded on here. This one was short, so I had to add on to it. It was just a shorter piece I had. And so I added that onto it, but it's all welded nice and solid. And actually these crossbars came from uh, office dividers for like offices where you can divide up cubicles. And I had to part out a bunch of them a while back for my work and all the frames were made out of this thin wall square tubing. And I brought a few frames home to cut up and here we go, more salvage. But anyways, it's a good break time. My girlfriend just brought me down a bowl of soup and some sandwiches. So perfect time to stop for now. So my chain showed up today. And I was getting ready to put them on, but I remembered this sprocket was the original Chinese sprocket, and it's really wide. The chains won't fit on here. I'd have to grind it down. I don't even really want to mess with grinding or turning it in the lathe, because um, I don't even know if the pitch is going to be the same. Could measure it. I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to take it off, put it in my lathe, chuck it up, cut it off, and I have this 48 tooth. It's much bigger. It's a Sunstar sprocket off my XR650L. I'm going to actually weld that on there instead. And then I'll have a really nice slow gear ratio with lots of torque. So we'll get to that next. All right, got the old sprocket cut off of the hub. Now I just need to take this down to 125 millimeters to fit this and then we can weld it on. Well, turns out the inner part of this getting close to the bolt pattern was actually heat treated. So all my high speed steel bits are just kind of grinding down and doing nothing. So I don't have any carbide, so I'd get a little more resourceful. I have some of these kicking around here, the carbide tip uh, countersinks. And I just chucked one of these guys up and just took my time and uh, got it cut down, left a little lip on the back. And here's the sprocket, a little bit of tap and it should fit all the way on there. And then I can weld it on. So there we go. Alright, got it all welded on. Now it's time to bolt it back on the quad. Alright, I did not order an O-ring chain for this thing. I always run them on my dirt bikes, but not on here. Cheap project, keep it simple. 30 bucks in chain for 520. Now I bought my first gold chain, I think it was 1976. It cost me $129. It's funny, it came in a box that has O-ring on it. Professional, ooh, that's great. G-belt motorcycle chain check this 1100 cc motorcycle out and japan technologies right there look at that it's even claiming did total knockoff but anyways hey it's gold so we're gonna slap this on next what you doing sucker? all right since the last update i got the chain on and i had to put another transmission mount because i was having a problem when you put it under load the transmission torque a little bit sideways and so I put another transmission mount on there, got a throttle cable hooked up, and it actually will move now. So what I need to do now is adjust the variator. I'll call them over and explain that on the other side. So I noticed this right off the bat when I first got the belt set up on here. This engine revs out at a lower RPM full throttle than uh, with the governor I should say on it than the original scooter transmission so the weights in the variator here are too light what I need to do is I need to take this back off take the weights and rollers out and put I think I'm gonna have to cut some stuff on my lathe and put some aluminum inserts in them and then lighten them until it works what I need to do uh, it works off a of centrifugal force they're too light now so if you rev it past the governor this belt will change in its pulleys this one will spring in this one will come out but right now it's not functioning right because the engine actually doesn't reach the high enough RPM for what it's tuned at. So we'll get to that next. So here's the inside of the variator. You got these rollers here and they're weighted and you can tune your uh, variator by weighting them differently. These ones, like I said, are too light for the RPMs. So I made these little aluminum plugs to go inside the weights here. I don't know if they're actually going to be heavy enough, but we'll try this out now. I might have to make some out of metal. Something a little heavier, but uh, we'll try this out and see how that goes.
Well, it's running and driving. I had a few bugs to work out with the transmission. It was kind of tweaking over the side a little bit with the stock rubber motor mounts, causing the chain to skip. But I put another mount on the transmission. That's working good. So yeah, it's running and driving forward and reverse. And uh, I got a linear actuator on the way to make this electric dump. That should be here pretty soon. But uh, about 20 minute video so far. So it's about time to wrap this one up. Um, part two, I don't know if there'll be a part three, we'll see. But uh, part two, I will be mounting the battery permanently. Right now it's just strapped on here. Um, making it a real comfortable, real seat for it. Doing the bed, putting sides on the top of the, the wood deck on here. Um, building a guard for the belt drive. Doing front fenders and hopefully a front rack. And uh, we'll see if we can wrap that up in part two. And um, hopefully get some footage of this thing operating, you know, see how it does dumping out dirt, moving rock, things like that. So uh, stick around, keep an eye out for part two, and we'll see if it goes long enough for part three. Thanks for watching. Take care.